Welcome to Found in Space, a science podcast for kids and teens. Where did the moon come from? And why is it going around Earth? So, wonderful question here. And there's actually a lot to dive into with this. So let's start by addressing the moon orbiting. So that's our word for going around the Earth. And it does orbit the Earth. But if we want to be a little bit more accurate, it's actually truer to say that Earth and the moon are orbiting the center of mass between them. So Earth is actually making these little circles, little wobbles around the point that the moon is also going around. So gravity works both ways. Not only is Earth tugging on the moon, but the moon is tugging back. Now, to understand where the moon comes from, how it got there, we need to wind back, rewind back to how terrestrial planets form. So terrestrial means Earth-like. So these are the planets that seem to be a lot like Earth and that they're made from rocks and metals. So these would be Mercury, Venus, Earth, the Moon, and Mars. And actually, we'll come back to this in the future, but there are some other planets like Io, which is a moon around Jupiter, that seem to be very terrestrial-like in general. But for now, let's talk about our classical terrestrial planets. So we think that when the, f the solar system was forming, the closer you'd be when, if you were a planet, the closer to the sun, the hotter it would be. And so you could form from heavy materials that would be at the center of the gravity well, the middle of the gravity well, because remember the terrestrial planets are very, very close to the sun and for materials that could freeze at really high temperatures because the sun is a star. It's giving off a tremendous amount of heat. It would, be, would have been very hot in this part of the solar system. So we think that planets come together by a process called accretion. And this is the little building up. So little bits of dust would clump together to form things the size of pebbles, and then pebbles would form things the size of rocks, and then to boulders, and bigger and bigger we get to what we call planetesimals, these pieces of planets that would smash and, and mush together to form these larger and larger objects. Once the object has enough mass, it's made of enough stuff, its gravity becomes strong enough that it pulls itself into a ball shape. Now, in planetary science, that's what we use as the criteria or the, the rule to decide if something is a planet or not. Has it crushed itself into a ball shape? But it can't be quite so massive that it becomes a star and does fusion. So something like the moon, we consider it to be a planet. Now, it's also a moon because it's orbiting around a planet. So another way we could describe it is as a secondary planet. So Earth is a primary planet and the Moon is a secondary planet. Or we were talking about Io a moment ago. Io is also a secondary planet and Jupiter is its primary. So we think that early in the formation of the solar system, there were lots and lots of terrestrial planets. And these planets started smashing into each other and moving about the solar system over long periods of time, orbits can shift and change around. So we think that there were two planets. There were a lot of planets, but two that are important to our story. One planet that we call Proto-Earth. So Proto means the early or before. So this was the main body which eventually would become Earth. And then there was another planet called Thea. Now Thea would have been a smaller planet, probably about the size of Mars. And we think that what happened was that these two planets actually collided and smashed into each other. 
And this collision would have given off a tremendous amount of heat. Think about two whole planets smashing into each other. And so, so much so that their cores would have been liquefied. Now we think that from this collision, we mushed together these two planets. So uh, think of it like taking two balls of clay, right? And you smash those balls of clay together and you roll them up and you get a new planet. But in this collision, extra material was probably thrown out into space and started to orbit around to go around the young new Earth. At this point, we'll talk about it as early Earth. And it's truly Earth now that it has mixed Thea and Proto-Earth together. But there was a lot of material flung out. Now, some of the material flung out was from Proto-Earth, but most of it was probably from Thea. And those pieces mixed together and they re-accreted into the moon. So Earth and moon are sibling planets formed from the collision of two other planets, Proto-Earth and Thea. Now the moon would have started a lot closer to Earth. And over time, just a few centimeters so that's about as fast as your fingernails are growing. The moon has been pulling away a little bit farther and farther, just a few centimeters a year. Now, a few centimeters, that's not very much. But if you add that up over four and a half billion years, which is how long ago we think this happened, well, that starts to really become quite far. So today, when we look up at the moon, it looks cold. It looks barren to us, but in the past, those dark spots that you see on the moon, those are lava fields. We call that the Maria or Mar for singular, and that's full of dry lava that seeped up from underneath when asteroids and comets smashed into the surface of the moon. So if we were able to see the moon as it was, billions of years ago, it would have been glowing red in our sky. Now back then, Earth, we didn't have oceans yet either. We were still cooling down. And so the moon would, instead of causing tides in the ocean, would have caused tides of lava rushing across the surface of the planet. It would have been quite amazing to witness, although quite dangerous. <laughs> you wouldn't want to be on the surface without some sort of protection from that lava. So what do we know about this planet Thea? Well, it's tricky to study because it's mixed in with proto-Earth. Now, there is some speculation that there may be some chunks inside of Earth some areas of greater density. So that's where we've got more material stuffed into a space than around it. So maybe some areas that are left over from Thea's core, which would have been an iron core, we think, that didn't fully merge with Proto-Earth's core. And so we find some lumps inside of Earth like that, but for the most part, it would have been mixed in with the rest of Proto-Earth. and there'd be more of it in the moon, but it really became these two different planets. So to learn more, we can keep studying with telescopes, but it really, really helps to actually have some pieces of the moon to bring back to Earth, look at in the laboratory, and take a look at what we call the isotopes. So the different versions, the different types of atoms inside of rocks that come from the moon. And so we can start comparing between moon rocks and earth rocks and different kinds of earth rocks and our models in the laboratory. So that's one of the things that hopefully the upcoming moon missions, so the program to go back to the moon, the Artemis program, hopefully that will bring more samples back to Earth that scientists can study, and we might get some new answers and a new piece of the story that we never knew before. All right, so let's pause here today. This is a wonderful question, talking about where is the moon from? 
And if any of you listening have questions that you would like answered here on the podcast, go ahead and have your grownups use the link in the description to send your question in. And thank you so much, Dark Skies, everyone. Remember to stay curious.